What's happening? Why is that? Merry Christmas! Ho ho ho! Do you play Santa Claus? Have you? I have not. I have not. Have You're you? The one with the hat, man. The hat doesn't make Santa Claus. Sure it does. I, I did. Uh, I did once. Uh, I was in a production of Hair, though, and I could have. I just, <laughs> when the run of that play started, wow. I had this massive beard I grew, and I didn't grow hair, so I had to wear a wig. Oh. So I had a really cool hippie wig, but my the beard was all me, baby. I could have. <laughs> Bald Santa. All right. Today we're talking about stocking stuffers, which sounds more Christmassy than it really is. Because basically it's our excuse to talk about small games. Games that can fit, uh, well, into a stocking, I guess. What was a, well, let's, well, we'll talk about a criteria, and you'll probably find out that we all have different criteria. Oh, probably so. Go ahead. And then you'll jump on the con. You guys need to talk to one another. I know, right? Um... Mine is basically that, but I did make sure that there were games that are available. <laughs> if you are going to, <clears throat> if you are going to uh, <laughs> go out, buy them, and stick them in a, in a in a in a sock, then you know they should be available. So I, I did that. I um I had a big list, and I, I went through it. And if it's just hard to find, it isn't there. Cool stuff doesn't carry it. Whatever, then I, I, I discounted it. Well, I'll come in on this, and yeah. then we'll give you a little bit of time to uh, think a, about what you're going to say. This is clearly something you guys talked about. Yes, yeah. it is. What, what, what would happen? I, too, made sure that all of my uh, games on this list were available. Uh -huh. I mean, if we're going to talk about them, you should be able to go out and get them, right? Right. So. <laughs> so. Woo. I just picked the top ten small games, and then I realized, after looking them up, <laughs> don't spit on the table! <laughs> that almost none of them are actually available. <laughs> so, okay, okay. so, I rejiggered my list quickly. <laughs> some of mine are still not available. Okay. But some of them are. Most of them are now. <laughs> Got it. So, you're, he, he'll be giving you the eBay list. <laughs> At least half my list is available. So anyhow. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Can't spit on the table. All right. I'm sorry. Cool. Okay. All um, right. So anyway, with that being said, let's get to number 10. Oh. Wait. I also made sure that mine were underneath $20. Me too. They're, uh, they're anywhere between 8 and about 15 is my most expensive. Yeah, I'm, uh, seven, I'm talking online prices. 7 15 to <clears throat> 18 Okay. Maybe I should have even done a list. All right, so uh, Sam and I will be doing the top ten list. Uh, Tom will be here moderating. <laughs> let's let's get started. Number ten. All right, my number ten is a really small game. As a matter of fact, this game can be found probably at Walmart um, or Target. Um, uh, Seven dollars and sixty nine cents on Cool Stuff. Oh no. No. Skippo. No. Trophy buck. <laughs> Zombie dice. <laughs> No, uh, it's it. a little game by Game Right called Loot. That's a little card oh, game. Yeah. That's, That's uh, very okay. simple to play, very uh, light, very, very, very light. Uh, you can either um, battle the king's uh, the king's uh, navy, or you can get the loot for yourself. And it's just a very light card game. Very cool, very easy to play. Um, fits very nicely into almost any size stocking, and would be a a good light addition to your collection. Cool. So that's Loot by Game Right. I think Loot is probably <clears throat> could win the award for a game published by the most different companies under different True. names. There's a lot. There was no, one about Odin. No, no. Loco. Uh, Thor. Quandry. Uh, the Animals one now. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That, that, both right. Wait, that was my number two. No. Both Ryan and Canizia games, though. Mm. I'm actually surprised Loot is still in print. I thought it was okay. It's a cute game. Still available. I'm surprised it's still available. Really We're am. making this video on the 11th of December, and I checked it today. Still 2013. Available. 2013. All right. 2013, yes. My number 10 Go ahead. is a game that is... Uh, some people won't consider it much of a game. It's more of an activity, but it's it sells a lot, and it's good for kids, and that's Rory Story Cubes. Okay. Rory Story Cubes has sold in, I don't know, the hundreds of thousands at this point. There's many different sets of it, but it's basically nine dice you get that have different 
actions on them or pictures on them and you roll them and you have to make a story with them. It mm -hmm. works really well with kids because the combinations you get, the dice are really high quality and it's a really inexpensive thing to buy. There's one that's all actions and I think there's one that's all things. And you can buy both of them, put them together. And I think they even branched out beyond that. But it's a, it's not a game that I'm like, hey guys, do you want to play Rory Story Cubes? You know, that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> well, <laughs> probably. Uh, but, but I think with families, with kids, it's a really good activity and it's really inexpensive and it's available and inexpensive. So I have at least one good eligible thing on my list. And it's, it's, it's available pretty much everywhere too. You can get it at, you know, Target, Walmart, that kind of place. You trying to rip the top off as oh what are you doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like one of those sitcoms that unravel the whole hat. Go uh, on the spot magic here. Okay, <laughs> my number ten is Saboteur. Saboteur. Saboteur is a uh, little card game. One or two. Uh, the first one. I think the second one's actually only an expansion for the first. Oh okay. I don't know. <clears throat> um. So Saboteur, it plays a nice crowd, it plays about eight or something like that. It plays a big group. Uh, it's one of those hidden uh, identity games. Mm -hmm. It goes for about eight dollars, something like that, yeah. online. Uh, and it's a great little game. It's it's quick. It, it plays easily. Um, you're laying cards down that make a path, so the cards are basically tiles. And uh, some people, some of the gnomes, the dwarves, whatever, they're trying to get to the treasure. There's um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's three possibilities where it might be. Only one of them is the actual loot and then there's some traders though some saboteurs who are trying to deviate that path cool little game if you like hidden identity games check it out saboteur that's my number 10. number nine my number nine is a cutesy style game but i think it's i think it's pretty fun i think it's still in my collection here somewhere and that's flower fall the game where you drop cards onto the table. See, I think you're like prejudiced against games that have flower themes. Flower <laughs> I'm getting power. silent treatment. I am. Flower power. Eric Summer likes that game. But anyway, uh, Flower Fall. That did not help your case at all. <laughs> oh. Wow. wow. All right. So you drop the cards on the table and where they land, then you do so like area majority. If you have the most flowers, connect it to other flowers that score points. It's silly fun. I think it really ramps up when you push the luck on it, like make people stand back and throw them a couple feet, you know, drop it off, you know, out the window of your house or, you know, do really crazy stuff. But it, it's a fun little game. It's a little more pricey for the size than would meet these guys' requirements. But that's my number nine, Flower Fall. Okay. My number nine, I am certain, will be uh, on someone's list a little later, but it is uh, my number nine. That is no thanks. No Thanks is a, a simple little card game where you are, it's sort of a reverse bid where you're attempting to not win uh, a card and uh, you pay out to not win it until eventually everyone has paid out enough or you're okay winning that money at yeah. the penalty of taking the card. Right. Very interesting little game, um, easy to explain, goes over really well almost always. It's, it's just people just gravitate to it and uh, if you're playing with a crowd that's only into the Unos and that sort of thing, you can teach this or you can give it as a gift and they will they will get it and I think they will like it. So um, that's my number nine, no thanks. Neat little card game. Cool. All right. All right, my number nine, <clears throat> a little card game that we have uh, talked about at some length uh, involves bean farming, mm -hmm. Bonanza. Still available at CSI <clears throat> for uh, $12.99. Is it really that inexpensive? Yes, it is. Wow, did they, did they make the box smaller? They might have. I used to have one which was about that big. Yeah. Right. And it had three spots, I believe, yes. for cards. Is right. that still it? Uh, that, that, that's the version that I have. If that's so, whether you're getting a deal. Wh whether they've repackaged it or not, I don't know. Yeah, I no longer have that one. I have one that's called uh, Bonanza Fun and Easy, which I'm not sure ever came out here in the it's U.S. It's Bonanza for people who can't stand it. It's a complication of the first one. Yeah, it's just, it, it's, it, 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 gets so rid of, like, it gets rid of, like, it gets rid of, like, two rules. But it's the same game, basically. What rules does it get rid of? It gets rid of uh, some of the logistics, like when you can do things. You're allowed to trade for more freely. Things like that. It's neat. I like it. Keep going. I'm done. <laughs> okay, cool. Bonanza. That's a good Moving that's a on. Bonanza choice. is a good one. You might have trouble fitting in your stocking. Depends on how wide it is, but it's a ah, good game. Most people like this show have big feet. Hi. Eight. 
My number eight is um, yet another little card game, which I'm sure many, many of these are. Um, <laughs> this is a game uh, that I believe I believe there's a big board game of it, and this is the card game. I've never played the board game. The card game is Archaeology, the card game. And the board game was not that good from what I understand. That's what I've heard as well, but I've never played it. Archaeology, the card game, is a really neat card game. It's very simple. It's actually a little bit similar to Bonanza because you are. it has some of those same uh, ideas where you are trading cards um, for other cards. The values come into play. If you make a bigger set, it's worth more. Okay. But there is a... Um, besides drawing from the deck, you can play sets in front of you, but there's also a, a market where uh, all the players can, can sort of trade with. And... Um, so you can lay down a card that is worth four, let's say, and pick up two twos, and that might make you a better set because you were holding two. I think of those you played already. this a long time ago. Probably did. Uh, from a, so, it, it's from Z-Man Games now, but originally it came from Adventureland, Adventureland Games. Adventureland Games in was, Australia. Was that's it, the designer's company, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's this really simple little card game, but it's really cool. It is neat. It is neat, and and there's some take that there's these storm cards that make you get rid of some cards and some thieves that let you pluck a card from the other player's uh, hand. But it's a neat game. Again, real simple, but a cool a cool little card game. I really like it. So that is my number eight, Archaeology, the card game. Good choice. Yep. All right. There's no arguing. We should have <clears throat> been more controversial. You don't always have to be controversial. Come on, My man. number eight, Rex. No. <laughs> <laughs> have fun fitting that in your stocking. Yeah, the whole purpose of this topic was so that Sam couldn't put Twilight Imperium on the list. Oh, Twilight Imperium, the dice game. <laughs> Foiled again. <laughs> My number eight is a game that uh, I, I've used a lot of different ways, um, uh, mainly with my family, with the youth group. I don't get to play it with gamers that much, but it's a really fun filler, and that is Ink and Gold. Started out as Diamant and got rehashed into uh, Ink and Gold. And I've actually, I had an old copy of Diamant. I think I picked it up from a. Uh, um, Are you sure you didn't get it from me? You brought it to a. Uh, one of our yard sales at the school, and I I picked it up for like a buck. Still kind of or, or wow, like that. that's a kind of steal there. Yeah, that's a great. So you have the nice one with the great I have, crate I have the and nice, stuff. I have the nice crates that's and great. everything like that, and then I have the ink and gold with the with the nice nicer cards. That's and, great. Yeah, so the one I have is the old uh, bend the card and make a tent edition, which yeah. is yeah. Yeah, I got rid of it. Yeah, but you know what? Even with that bend the card thing, it's still a great game. No, yeah, it well, is. The game is great. Right, game is great. Game is great. Sixteen ninety nine at, at Cool Stuff Incorporated, and uh, Ink and Gold is is a great game of pushing your luck. Uh, usually, your luck, my luck runs out on me uh, much earlier than I would hope. But uh, you push your luck. You try to get as far down and deep into the cave as you can. Get as much loot as you can. Try to leave at the right time when you're the only one leaving so that you can pick up some of those artifacts on the way up. Yeah. It's just a really cool game. Really easy push your luck. Great filler. Uh, 17 bucks. Cool stuff. You should go pick it up. Nice. I'm really impressed with all these prices. Like, right there. Right there. It's like it's like you did research. Um, hmm. my, <laughs> huh. Now, I'm really glad that we're, like, so unified on these choices, so I think this yeah. should continue. It comes a bad game. I feel bad game. <laughs> it's not a know. bad game. It's just that the last two games I mentioned, Rory Story Cubes and Firefall, were very light. So we're going to go to the extreme opposite of that thing, but still a small game that you can package about civilization-building card game. Oh. And that's Innovation. Oh. Now, Innovation is a great card game. I highly recommend the yellow version, I-E-L-L-O, the... Uh, because it has really cool artwork on it. It's a deeper game than much. There's a lot of take that random nosity, but it's really cool and a, a better player will beat you, I think, even though there is randomness in the game. The Dice Tower Dictionary grows. Random nosity? <laughs> that's awesome. Random nosity is a word that we have created and I'm well, going to continue to use. That's actually one I got to jump on that bet. I like that. I like that. All right. So anyway, that was number Eight. Eight. Innovation. And you both agree? No. I hate oh, that game. Absolutely not. <laughs> Thank you. Number seven. My number seven is a game from Freedom and Freeze. And uh, this is a little card game only for two, which has a little bit of uh, deck building if in it. If you say that pickle game. No, no, no. This is uh, Familia. Familia is a game that uh, Rio Grande put out a few years ago, and it is still available. I was, I was happy to find that out because I don't think it gets enough love. And uh, as I said, two-player card game with some deck building where you are attempting to gather the most gangsters, basically. And you do so by drafting them. Say you can play two value one gangsters to grab a value two gangster. 
uh, you have to leave one of those two value ones on the table and then some of the powers will let you put that guy back in your hand to keep using him it's tricky and there's only four um, I don't want to say clans but four groups of people and they each each group only has a single power but it's a neat game those single those four very simple powers interact in really neat ways I like the game a lot and um, if you're looking for a cool two-player card game that comes in those tiny little boxes um, check it out I like it a lot how is it pronounced again I, I pronounce it familia it's not familia no, it has the G in it there. It does have it in there? It does have the G mm. in there, yeah. Okay, that's fine. I, I, I'm, I'm legitimately curious. <clears throat> it does. Number seven is a brand new game that just came out um, in the last couple weeks, but I am in, completely enamored with it, and that's Bang the Dice Game. Wow. Bang the Dice Game is just... It's like another variation. If you like King of Tokyo, I think I... I could see, you like Bang the Dice Game. It's very similar. You have these dice and you roll them and you can re-roll them twice like Yahtzee. And then you'd use the symbols on them to attack other people. But at the same time, you, if you roll three dynamite symbols, boom, you take a life point. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you each have special powers. There's another card game called Bang, which maybe it, five years ago would have been on this list. For me, right. you know, bang, get, it's a great socking stuffer. But I think I'd rather play bang the dice game because it's so much easier and faster and fun to get into. This would have made my list had it been available at Cool Stuff Inc. But even if it's not available, it's probably available by the time some of you are watching because you're probably watching this in February. And I saw that... <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. And I also saw that it wasn't available, but this would have been my number 11. Because it's so new that I'm sure we we just happen to look at cool stuff in in a lull. So you like, played it? Like it's, I it's out and it'll be right, right yeah, back yeah, yeah. in. So I you played, played it? it? You like yeah. it then? I love it. It's, yeah. it's a really neat yeah, little it, dice. It, game. it definitely would have made my list. The only reason it didn't is because I, it's not available. Ah, I'm just I'm the just the glad dice, you guys like my choice. The dice also are amazing. Really yes. cool and great dice. It looks very, neat. Very well produced. Very cool. All right. What's your All number right. seven? <clears throat> my number seven is a game. Of dealing real estate. Uno. Sale. Oh. For, what is this with Uno? <laughs> Monopoly the card game. <laughs> For sale, $16.49 at Cool Stuff right now. Wait, did you just want me to do the whole Griffin game series? We could just. Actually, Botsano was on my short list. It's not available. <laughs> I mean, it's not available. But anyway, back to my pick. Uh, For Sale is a great game that has gone over in many, many, many different kinds of groups, and uh, you would be hard-pressed to find a group that it would not go over well in. I think even gamers would enjoy this as a short, light filler in between two mm -hmm. heavier games. So, uh, For Sale, um, really, really neat. Just trying to maximize your, your points um, and the money that you make from, from the purchases that you make, and then you have to sell them back at the second half. So... Um, really cool game for sale. I really like that. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's just a little bit bigger than I was sort of yeah. looking at. You know, yeah, those yeah. those Griffin boxes are just a little bit bigger than just throw the, the box typical, away. Typical tiny stuffer. <laughs> no, put it in a zip. It is bag. it is in a bigger box than it needs <laughs> you know, to be. Absolutely. I I used to have a lot more of these. You know, these rook tins and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like this has a game called um, you're bluffing in it. You know, which is a great game, but. You know, I don't want to keep the giant box. I put it in these. The only problem with these is we're like, oh, let's play this game. What is it? <laughs> right. It's, that's that's what they make permanent markers for. I understand that, but then you, here's... Oh, you can put a name on it. Now, listen, listen. Or even labels. We're rabbit trailing here, but the reason I don't write on permanent markers is because I've done that, and then I change my mind about keeping that game and want to keep a different game instead. Stickers, labels. labels. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Number six. My number six is a little obscure game that came out last year from a small company, and it they. This is normally me, you know that. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, yeah, but Sam's played this one. I don't think you have, and it's Tricks and Treats. I've played this. I haven't played that. Well, which one have you played? Because there's Trick and Treats. The, the one with the pumpkin bags. That one. This one. Yeah. Yeah, that Tricks one. and treats. <clears throat> That's the one you mean? Yes. Yes. Well, maybe you've played it, and I have. No, I know you've played this because oh. your son's like that. This, <laughs> this is a game in which you have 
these baskets out there and you're putting treats in the baskets, you're playing them in there, but no one knows whose basket is which. Mm -hmm. Now you can watch people as they put the treats in and think you know which one's which. Yeah. And then it even has these special trick baskets that change everything up. I think it's really fun and I think it's a pretty cool game for how small the package it is. That's right. Yeah, you, like you got it. me, right? <clears throat> you don't like it. Mm -mm. I like it. I like it. I you actually, just want candy. That's what it is. I actually uh, just bought this game not a week ago because cool stuff happened to have it on sale. And I picked it up for five bucks. Hmm. They don't have it right now because I just checked. <laughs> I know that, but they had it when I made my list. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying, it, it, it might come right back, right? They didn't have it right now, but I thought about it. I checked. I went that far. Mm -hmm. So that's a good pick. All right. But you don't like it. I don't like it. Anti-candy. No, it's not candy. It's just I don't like the game. All right. I think it's a Go ahead. chaotic mess. Um, <clears throat> my number six is a game that uh, I think Z will have my back on this one. Okay. Candotieri. I uh, probably pronounced it wrong. Oh, the Fantasy Flight one is small. Yeah, because yes. as soon as you said that, I'm like, wait a second, that's, yeah, a, that's big a big box. One. No, that's I'm the one I have. The, I have the old. Okay, talking yeah. about the oblong one that's, that's kind right. of rectangular shape. I think any um, game could be stocking stuff. You just put a card that says, here's the game you got. Look under the tree. <laughs> well, here, here's the um, thing. Here's back the, to Rex. Here's the thing. No, what, what, what I was thinking is, is that over $20, $25, you're starting to get into big games that actually feel like a actual present not just a stocking stuffer right you get underneath 20 you're staying in the realm where it's it's it feels like you know it's not that ooh game it's that oh, all right yeah cool cool nice little it's, it's that nice price. little cool game. how often do you guys get stocking stuffer games i've got a couple of them i don't think i have i, I got a couple of them not not i get huge. garbage in my stocking but yeah well <laughs> Cold. <laughs> but anyway, Condottieri is, uh, or how, how do you pronounce it? I, I think that's right. That's we are going to accept yeah. that. Okay, cool. That's accepted. Uh, but it's a, it's a really cool area control game, and it, and it uh, fit, what, four, four players, I think? No, that goes no, up, it went up to six. six. It goes up to five. I don't think you should play it with five or six, right. really. Right. I think, I think four, four is good. Yeah, three yeah. Three is four. But anyway, it's, it's a really cool game, and it's actually a pretty, it's a pretty deep game. Yes, for, for, for the size and price. Of it. So you're getting a lot of game uh, for 17 bucks from Cool Stuff, so... Um, did I mention it's available at Cool Stuff? Go! <laughs> <laughs> Handering! <laughs> okay, my number six. Also, what he said, available at, you know. Um, <laughs> cool Stuff. Incorporated. Zuloretto. The Dice Game. Uh, <laughs> Zuloretto. <laughs> Zuloretto the Dice Game is uh, the... It has to be, out of all the Zuloretto, Coloretto, all that, that whole family of games, this is probably the lightest one, which is saying a lot, because... Yeah, because Coloretto's like Colorado really light. Very light. This is very light, okay? It takes 15 minutes. It's um, it's a little bit like, what's the game where you check off on the on the, the roll through the ages? It's like that, but it's, it's like extra, extra light, where you are collecting sets of animals that you rolled off on dice, and you don't draft them. You, you do the Coloretto mechanic where you roll and you put it on a truck. Or, or you take the truck. And then you mark off on a little sheet you have what you got. If you're the first one to get to the end of a row, say you're the first one to have five lions or whatever, you get a bonus, say two points, and nobody else gets that bonus. But you still get one point per animal. Um, something like that. It's very simple. It's like themed Yahtzee. A little bit. A little bit. You didn't what? make that sound interesting at all. I like it a lot. It's it's a neat game. Um, no, it's, it sounds like, like a, light, like, a, a really streamlined, light version of Zulroto. That's what it sounds like. It is, and it, and you're right. It is Yahtzee-ish. I'm not going to deny that, but I like it. It's a good game for kids also. They will like the animals on the dice. The dice are very nice wooden dice, and uh, it's a colorful game. Extremely quick. And it, it has always gone over well for me, so I like it a lot, and that's a keeper for me. Zuloretto the dice game. Next will be Zuloretto the coin flipping game. Yeah, you have flipping. three coins flipping. with animals. The flicking game, you flick <laughs> a lion at a goat. Moving on! Number all right, my number five is a game in the Bang family. We've already mentioned the dice game, but this is another one that since uh, the dice game didn't make it on my list. I feel um, it. I feel, I feel I know it. I know. Japanese. Samurai Swords. Yeah. Samurai Swords. This, whoa, fumbling my papers here. Uh, $13.49 at Cool Stuff Incorporated. And... Uh, <laughs> I feel like we're at one giant infomercial. There you go. Sam's about to get a huge shipping of the 
All these here's hoping. <laughs> but anyway, no, I, of course, uh, tongue in cheek. But the 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 game. Um, I forgot the name. <laughs> Samurai, Samurai Swords. Samurai Swords. <laughs> yes, good. Nice. Um, now this came out before it being the dice game, of course. Yeah. And uh, this was the one where I was like, "Whoa, I don't have to play Bang anymore." Yeah, because I think it's a little Bang, better than Bang. Bang becomes kind of convoluted the more people you add to it. Mm -hmm. Samurai Swords doesn't suffer from that because there's a there's a definite game ender. Um, whereas Bang, the game ender was just so far fetched when you had so many people. It just drew out and drew out and drew. And there was really no player elimination as much no, in this one. No, not 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 really. But Samurai Swords really kind of <clears throat> replaced Bang for me. Um, so I'll still enjoy Samurai Swords though, even though the dice game is around. I think we can own both of those because Samurai Swords has that Japanese flavor to it. Right. That right. that uh, the dice game still has the Western flavor to it. So right. I would I would actually have both of them. But uh, since the dice game wasn't available yet. <laughs> um, I went ahead and got went, went with uh, Samurai Swords. Well, it's, the dice game is also about fifteen minutes, to, right? right? Yeah, so, it's shorter. To for still comments that I know will appear on this YouTube channel, yes, we know there is an old Milton Bradley game called Samurai Swords about something completely different. Which is we're not talking about that. That can't fit in ten stockings. Which is why we said it's in the Bang family because it is actually called Bang Samurai Swords. Oh, there you go. Bam, your turn. All right, my number five is. Haggis. Haggis is this little card game, um, which is a ladder climbing game, you know. Just got a little, taking ladder climbing. Just got a little hungry. Uh, that's what I was thinking, too. What mm. did I know Haggis? Got it. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, the idea is it's either a two- or a three-player game, I believe. It's two or three. Right, and I've, I've, I think I've exclusively pay, played it with two, because I really like it at two. Yeah, it works well and, with two. And... Uh, it's basically get rid of all your cards, but there's some really neat twists on the typical get rid of all your cards uh, ladder climbing kind of game where you are playing, you know, a pair and the other person plays a better pair until you can no longer do that. They get those out of the way and then they lead a run, a three of a kind, whatever. It's really cool because you start with some cards on the table that you can use them to, if you are unable to beat what's on the table, bomb that. The opponent gets the card, so you don't get the points, but you get to lead into the next thing. So neat. There's some give and take there. You have to decide, is this worth all the points that are on the table? Giving those up so that I set the pace for the next hand. Really cool. If you like that idea and you're into really simple card games, it feels like you're playing with a, with a regular deck of cards. Check it out. Haggis. I really like that. For, for two or three, great at two. Hmm. Well, Z already mentioned one great Adventure Land card game, which was Archaeology the Card Game. I'm going to mention their newest one, which features one of my favorite mechanisms, drafting, and that's Sushi Go. Sushi Go is a card game. It's basically all about drafting. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else in it. You just, on your turn, you get a handful of cards and you draft different sushis. Some of them give, you get points for having pairs. Some you get points for having the most of that. It has cool little funny sushi artwork on it. Wasabi. Super easy. Uh, Sam's always, you know, trumpeting Fairy Tale and how great it is. And this is maybe not as good as Fairy Tale, but it's certainly easier oh, and, and more yeah. family friendly. I, I mean, by family friendly, I mean it's easy to get people to understand how to play. You're like, here's the five different things you're collecting. This is how you get points. It's, and it's also not about fairies and strange forest folk. It's about sushi. No, I don't, yeah, but I, I don't care about that. What I'm saying in fairy tale, there's cards that make other cards flip over. Right. And, you know, if you get this no, card, these cards are worth well, five. It's a little... I, I would say it's definitely not better than fairy tale, but it is easier than right. fairy yeah. tale, which makes for a lighter game, which means more people will probably be... Sushi Go, though, is a game I think I would buy for almost anybody, even if they weren't big gamers. I could mm -hmm. say, oh, you'll yeah. like Sushi Go, yeah. and it would work That's well. So choice. that's my number five. Fairy tale would have made my list. <laughs> Just not available. <laughs> number four. All right, my number four is a game that has taken a lot of flack because it has a ten as its box, and it's also taken a lot of flack because it's uh, Pandemic Two. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it anyway, and that is Forbidden Island. 
Uh, $11.99 at Cool Stuff Inc. Is it really that what cheap? What steal. $11.99. Wow. Now, I'll tell you, it might not fit in your stocking. Yeah, you that, this to... is the closest. I mean, look at it over here. That's a thing. I don't care. Yeah, I that know. game might not fit in your stocking, but at $12, you need to own that game. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I, they're, they might even be low on quantity. I can't remember the quantity, but I, I did look. I just can't remember. But yeah, it is big, and, and, and this is kind of the, the bigger ones uh, on my list. But, I mean, good night. At, at 12 bucks, you're getting a lot of game, and you're getting a game with legs for 12 bucks, and, and it's really simple to play. It's, it's a really cool, a beautiful component. easy to play cooperative game. All right. That's great. My number four, I was going to say Lost Legacy. Which is the newest? It's this oh, little, okay, this yeah. little card game here, um, and I was all excited until Sam informed me that I was doing my list wrong um, because you can't find this anywhere. You will eventually. So I decided to switch back to the original version of that, the one that is on everyone's tongue these days, and that's Love Letter. Love Letter, Love Letter, Love Letter, Love Letter. Very simple game. I think there's three versions of it now that you can get. Um, it's what I think 17 cards. It's very simple. The, the first time I played it, we played it, and I was like, whoa, let's do that again. It mm -hmm. just it grabs you like that. All you do is draw a card and play a card. And then you're trying to basically outmaneuver the other players. It's super fun, super cheap, definitely fits in a stocking. Love letter. Absolutely. Cool. My number four. Everything he just said. Love letter. Oh, really? Woo! Matching. Uh, I'm done. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> Number three. And now for another pretty new game, but I've really been enamored with this game. There's there's the whole is werewolf better or resistance better, you know, back and forth. And then they came out with the new werewolf one. Uh, oh, werewolf. Well, yeah, but there was another werewolf Inquisition. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, yes. which was good. And I like all these games, but One Night Werewolf has just really grabbed me because it's super fast, super light, and the new Ted Osbach one uh, from BZI Games. With the, if you use the app that comes with it, I think the app's out for iPhone and Android. It runs so smoothly oh, cool. and it's so silly and fun. You know, basically, if, if you've ever played Werewolf or Mafia, it's basically the same thing except it's just one night. And I'm like, Z, you're the werewolf. And Z says, I'm not the werewolf. And I say, Z, you lie in every game ever in existence. I, Z could show me his card. And it would say villager, I'm and I would werewolf. still vote for him to be werewolf oh, at this point. Oh, oh. <laughs> we are so far gone, Z. Like a, man, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I need to stop playing these lying games. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, but I mean, it, it's one night. It has a lot of different roles in it because it's the ultimate one night werewolf now. Right, right. Uh, but I like it a lot. So that was my number three. Cool. Does that mean? Yep. All right. My number three is. Uh, the smaller version of a big game that I really, really like, and this is Mr. Jack Pocket. Mm. Mr. Jack Pocket is still a game for two players, uh, still a game about figuring out who is who, or rather, one person is trying to figure out who the other person represent, is, you know, represented by on the board. But it's simplified considerably. You are now playing with, uh, instead of on a big map, you're playing with these tiles that have streets, and you can, the characters are moving around the outside of those, and you can either look down a street, or they'll be rotating those tiles, the players, and you may not be able to look down the street. And uh, after you've done some rotations, you ask the other player, can I see you? And if you say yes, then you eliminate everybody who you cannot see, or vice versa. Really neat two-player card game. It, it cuts down the Mr. Jack uh, time by quite a bit. You can play in about 15 minutes. And it's a tiny little square box. You're making this sound like... They took this complicated game and made it simpler. Mr. Jack is already super simple. Oh, I don't know. What did they that. do? Like, let the air out of the tires? <sighs> oh, look, this is all that's left. Well, all the characters don't have powers, for example. That's like one of the only interesting things of the game. This is interesting because it's even more of a puzzle sometimes. It's so simple. Like, it's been so streamlined that you sometimes really sit there and go, if I do this, then he does that, then I can't do this one. Fine, let me think about it. If I do that one then, and he does this, I can still counter with that. Okay, but you know what I mean? It makes you puzzle it out every turn. I like that a lot. 
So again, Mr. Jack Pocket, if you like the uh, sounds of that, check it out. I really dig it. My number three. That was a poor choice. Actually, I remember him showing that to us one time, and we were all enamored with how, how good it looked. How, how well produced it looked, being in such a small box. Mm -hmm. It I is a tiny, tiny that. box. I remember that. I don't but remember you had, that. You, the components that were, were really nice. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Moving on. All right, my number three is a, another game that's in a tin. It is only $5 more than Forbidden Island. And I think it is well worth that extra $5. It is its counterpart, Forbidden Desert. Okay, now we're really you pushing the stocking stuff. No, we're not. You put both. It's the same size as Forbidden Island. No, it's a little bigger. It's a little bigger. No. Yeah, it is. You can see it right there. Okay, I will go over there and grab it. Right <laughs> That's fine. I can see. Yeah, yeah. But still. You need two stockings. Stocking All of my choices are available. <laughs> oh, the and dagger. under $20. The dagger turns and twists. Really? Forbidden Desert is under 20 bucks too? $16.99. Forbidden Desert. Dude, at folks, cool stuff in turn this video off right now and go buy both of those. I mean, you're just, that's crazy. Yes, it is. Uh, and, Don't go. And, and the, the <laughs> uh, amount of game that you get for $5 more from Forbidden Island to Forbidden Desert is, a, well, I wouldn't say astounding, but it's really cool and it's well worth the $5 extra. So you think Forbidden Desert's better? I Yeah, it's it's one yep. more up, it's one higher. A Forbidden Desert is a little bit more of a, I, I guess you could say a gamer's version of Forbidden Island to where it, it has a few more mechanics in there. It has a few more, it's a little bit more difficult. Makes I think. you think more. Makes you think a little bit yes. more. So it's not as light as Forbidden Island, but uh, for 17 bucks, um, you know, 16.99, you, you really can't go wrong with this. You're getting a very nice package. You're getting very, very, very nice components and you're getting a very nice, uh, easy, to, easy to play game. Although it is, it, it can be kind of thinky. Um, it's a nice step up from Forbidden Island, right. I think. I, I, and I like the fact that Forbidden Island originally felt a little bit like, oh, this is pandemic-ish. I don't think this game can be accused of that as, as well. This right. has definitely got some really original mm -hmm. mechanics in there that you wouldn't even think of looking at pandemic. Right. So I recommend it. Yeah, it's yeah, a great game. Absolutely. I'm just not sure if it fits in a stocking. But <coughs> it's it a won't. Good, it's a good That's game. That's fine. I don't nice. Care. Number two. All right, my number two is a game. This is the only game on the list, which is actually a solo game. This is a game that is only solo. Um, this is Friday. And this is from Fridman Freeze Friday. You managed to get this on like a lot of lists. Well, so I do the same thing for, you know, I don't know, nothing else here. Um, <laughs> I mentioned Famiglia not too long ago. Anyway, Friday is a really cool game. I really like it. It's uh, it's a bit of a deck building game for one, where basically you start with a really crummy deck where Robinson Crusoe hurts himself with a stick every other card, basically, and he can't stay awake. And uh, <laughs> as you play, <laughs> he wakes up and pokes, ah. As you play the game, you are attempting to go on these little quests, and if you beat the card where that the quest is on, that card goes in your deck, and on the on one half of it is what you have to beat, on the other half is what the card actually becomes in your deck. And so you're you're beefing up your deck as you're uh, as you're playing, and you you can push your luck and try to flip more cards and, and beat the uh, the task you have to complete. But if you still if you push and push and still don't make it, you lose more you know life. It's a really neat game. If you um, like the idea of deck building and you want to try a really original little card game that uses some of that in a, in a unique, interesting way, check it out. Friday. I really like it. It's probably my favorite solo game. Not that there's that many, but that's my favorite. And it's a great stocking stuff. For yeah, tiny, I don't like solo games, box. so... Have you played this, Sam? Um, uh, I don't ever recall... Unless it's a video game, playing a game by myself, so no. Okay. okay. Oh, I don't do it too much either. Myself. I think I own like three games that can be played alone, but that's one of them. Yeah. And it's I really like it. I really like it. All right. I'm just not a fan. The whole reason I, I enjoy playing board games is for interaction with other sure. people. Sure. Speech head. All right. <laughs> All right. My number two is uh, Summoner Wars: The Master Set. Okay, that's a lie. <laughs> 
Um, I, but it is Summoner Wars. I thought... The two army packs, or if you already own Summoner Wars, or your significant other, or you're, the person you're buying the stocking stuffer already owns Summoner Wars, some of those expansion packs, those uh, other packs. Um, the, 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 two, the two army packs are only $17.49, $17.49.6, and the, the little booster packs are only 6 bucks. On cool stuff, right. so I get you a whole new army. Yeah, I mean these are these are absolute. I think slam dunks for, as far as stocking stuffers right. for your gamer friend or your gamer significant other, whatever it is. If they don't already own uh, Summoner Wars, buy them that two, two two deck army, see if they like it, and then they can go out and buy the buy the master set or what have you. But uh, I, I, I see. I thought about this. I thought, well, could I put X Wing on the list? I mean, because I could drop X Wing shit. You know, the the single X Wing ships and the. Stocking, that, that's a really cool stocking stuffer if you already own the game, though. Right, but that's what I'm saying. You, you, that, that's only part of my recommendation. Oh, okay. The main recommendation is those two, two, two army packs. All right, all right. My number two is one of two different games because of the, basically the same game, and that's Pixel Tactics or Pixel Tactics 2. You know, and you can mix them together. And I just really like this. I really like Pixel Tactics. I really like the two player. I mean, and the game comes in this really small box. I don't even know where it is. Oh, whatever. What? It's my soda's there. Good. Oh, we were missing one of those. Um, <laughs> and and <laughs> not to do what Sam's been doing the entire video, but those are actually still on pre order. So then pre order them. No, that's actually available, in my opinion. That counts. <laughs> Wait, availability is an opinion now. Okay. Um. <laughs> Something that went out of print is easy to, you know, could come back tomorrow. This isn't out. It's going to be out any day now. Okay, well, I will get it when it comes out. Which means the I distributors do, will get it Because I do like Pixel Christmas. Tactics, which I play with you, and I do like that one. I, I, I like it. All right. I have the original one. You're really up to date on what, what games are in or out. I just checked cool stuff. Yeah, we did research for our yeah, All right, all right. Well, let's go to number one. All right. And finally, number one. All right. <laughs> My number one, and I think I'm going to get some flack for this choice here Maybe. because I think these guys are not fans of this game. Not My so. number one is Hive Pocket. <clears throat> Hive is a two-player abstract game um, which has come out in three versions so far. Actually, there were some before that. It is available in three. Hive... Something called Hive Carbon, which makes all the pieces black and white, and added a couple of new... Looks really cool. Yeah, it does. It looks striking. And it added an extra figure or two. And then this Hive Pocket, which is the last thing they did. And it's the same as Hive, but the pieces are really tiny. And it comes in... It, you can put it in a little bag. It's, it's a tiny little thing. And it packs a lot of cool abstract gaming in that tiny little box. I think if the person that you are buying the, the game for is into, is into abstract games and for some reason they haven't come across this one, this is a slam dunk. This is a, a, a you know, knocking, out, knocking it out of the park. So Hive Pocket is my number one. If you like abstracts at all, check it out. Actually, I'm not going to down you on that choice because I don't like Hive, but I recognize the quality of the game, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I, I understand what it is. I mean, and it... It even is slightly thematic. Right. Well, I, yeah, I, you almost stole the words right out of my mouth. I, I actually thought about including that on my list, even though I don't. I'm not a fan of right. abstract games. You do get a, a lot of good quality for your buck. Yeah, yeah. It's, with it's with with high little cheap thing. Yeah. So it's it, it is. I, it'd be worth your purchase. It is. I I I have played Hive a few times. Um, I, I, it just didn't stick with me because I don't like abstracts. Right, and my qualifier... That's the only reason. My qualifier stands. Like, if you like abstracts, yeah, check it but out. But it is a good purchase. You're getting good quality components. You're getting a good solid game yeah. for, for not a whole lot of money. Well, I have a qualifier my number one. If you like games, if you don't like games, then don't. Wow, don't play. wow, this must be good. <laughs> it, was, it was already on Z's list, and that's no thanks. No thanks is... I've actually given this out as stocking stuffers before. Mm. Now, it's not currently available on Cool Stuff, even though Z lied earlier and said it was, but it might be, because it's a game that sells so well that it's constantly in and out of production, no, I'm sure. I know I put it in here. 
It's it's not available on cool stuff, but it is available elsewhere. It yes. is available, just not on cool stuff. But but, 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 but okay, we're yeah, talking too much about that. It might be available by the time people watch this. I understand that, but no, that just, is why I included just making it. sure it's it's, okay? it is it's available. Out. No thanks though is is great. It's so easy to teach. I've never had it go poorly. I've taught it in ESL situations where I play with people who don't really know a lot of English. Right. Worked great there. Right. I've taught it to people who don't like most board games. It worked great there. My parents like it, you know, which is rare. They hate um, everything. No, they don't. Uh, but I, I still remember the first time I taught Ticket to Ride, and I was like, is this like Monopoly? You kept saying it the whole game. I was like, Dad, you're so stereotypical here. That's when you, that's when you say <laughs> yes, and, you know, that's, you, you go with one of those. You don't go, no, no, no. Roll with it. Yeah, you roll with that punch. Of course, of course father. I didn't say anything. My mom would just be like, what are you talking about? She, I let her yell at him. Oh, that works, too. That works, too. <laughs> All right. I love you, parents, in case you ever watch this. <laughs> They're not going to watch this. <laughs> All right, my number one, and I'm probably going to get hate on it because this is probably too big, too, but nah, at this point, I really Twilight don't care. Twilight Imperium. I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. But for $13.49 and cool stuff, The Resistance is a game that you should go out and pick up. Well, right it's smaller than the now. other games you mentioned, so we're okay. Okay, I'm going to rip your Santa hat off in just a minute. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, anyway, the re <laughs> The Resistance is a jam-packed full of game, and it's only $13.50. Um, you, if you enjoy the whole werewolf mafia, uh, try to figure out who's who uh, before a certain amount of time, or, or that type of thing is concerned, if you like all that kind of stuff, um, I think this game knocks the socks off all those other ones, especially the one that he mentioned, the whole one-night werewolf well, we exercise just, in futility. Um, <laughs> They're different games, really. They they feel different. One Night Werewolf was like boom, boom, and yeah, yeah, Resistance yeah. is a much more involved right, game. Right, right, right. No one cares. Um, the <laughs> Resistance, though, is a game that you will absolutely enjoy. It has zounds of player interaction and uh, actually has decent quality components in it. So you should actually go pick it up because it's $13. Right. Well, I'll tell cents. you this. If the Resistance was still in the original version that came in the size that, like, Haggis mm. is in still, yeah. the, the tiny little card game right. size, it would have been easily my two or three, at least. Yeah. Because it is an amazing game. So, it's so just now out in a slightly bigger, bigger box. box. So it only Yeah, size but the bigger the list. bigger box is sure, a better box. It. Only size. size kept that game off my list. Okay. Because I'm it, good with that. Because it used to be a tiny little box and now yeah. they kinda, you know, they glamorize. I yeah, think they that, I think the, the glamorization though really helps the game. It does. It does, I'm sure it does, but it doesn't fit in the stocking swap right. right. Which is well. fine. They don't care. <laughs> yeah, sell it. Exactly. Sam cool. says no one cares what we think. Comment no if you care. Tell us you care. Are dice a good stocking stuffer? No, but a deck of cards would be. A nice deck of cards, okay? I'm talking about from the companies that make custom decks of cards. Like, like Bicycle? Illusionist, like uh, Theory 11. Um, they make custom decks of cards, still printed by the United States Playing Card Company, because they're, so, they're, so they're nice, but they're very custom, very cool. What about card sleeves? That's weird. That's a weird stocking stuffer. That's well, kind of I would, I wouldn't say it's weird. Let, let's put put yourself in the shoes of real quick. I mean, if you if you have a person that you know, you've been talking to them. They just bought this new game. They said I need to put sleeves on these cards, and they just haven't got around to it. That would be pretty cool to find. All right, cool. I finally got them. You know, I, I don't know. I think people it's tend, legitimate. People tend to be very particular about the type, the feel, right, the color. Yeah, no, you know I, what I mean? It's yeah. too much. It's too many variables. I'll tell you this though. I think that if you a lot of people email me like I got I know someone I don't know what game to get from. If you're not sure, I think sometimes going out of your way to find like. Think of a game they have and think of a way that you can bling it out, like finding the little mm. uh, dudes for Lords of Waterdeep or the oh, yeah. Pandemic tokens. I think that's a really cool thing to add to a game. That, I'm right there with you. Yes, yeah, absolutely. so anyway, those, those game are... Game accessories. I like game accessories. Yeah. Those are our top uh, 10 stocking stuffers. So that's it for this time. We'll see you guys next time with the best games of 2013. Oh, oh, oh. All of these are wrong. Actually, I already wrote your list for you. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I didn't worry about that. I didn't go home and I'll do Oh, and the best thing you can put in your stocking for somebody is a gift certificate <laughs> from to to Cool where? Stuff <laughs> Incorporated. This has been such such a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get on the table and do a little jig now. Cool Stuff.
This 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 might be too much, too much. <laughs> I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I am the future Cool Stuff Incorporated representative of Homestead, <laughs> Florida, Sam Healy. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>